Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today, we'll be diving into a Western action movie titled The Magnificent Seven. Enjoy the recap. In 1879, a small town named Rose Creek finds itself under the shadow of a wealthy and ruthless man. He wasn't just a robber, he was also a gold mining tycoon, and he had set his sights on Rose Creek for its rich gold mines. Bogue didn't just want to control the gold. He squeezed every ounce of work out of the townspeople, paying them meager wages. Fed up with the hardship, the townspeople gathered together, seeking a way out. The big question. Should they give up their homes in Rose Creek to Bogue or resist him with all they had? Amidst the tense voting, Emma and her husband Matthew were vocal about their decision. They weren't going to let Bogue take their land no matter what. Out of nowhere, Bogue and his men stormed the church. He shamelessly tells everyone that he'd buy any plot in Rose Creek for a mere $20. This was a pittance way below its true value. He gave the residents a chilling ultimatum. Leave within two weeks or face horrifying consequences. The townspeople were outraged, expressing their strong disapproval of Bogue's audacious threats. But Bogue, not one to be challenged, retaliates. In a horrifying act of power he set the church ablaze and takes several lives, including Matthews. He even tells the sheriff to leave the bodies for a few days to send a brutal message to the rest. In a neighboring town, Warren Officer Sam Chisholm confidently strides in on his horse. The townsfolk eye him suspiciously. Stopping at a saloon, he questions the bartender about an outlaw named Powder Dan. Tension rises when the saloon's patrons point their weapons at Chisholm. But with a swift hand and unmatched precision, Chisholm disarms them all. Recognizing the bartender as Powder Dan, he guns him down, calmly. Chisholm instructs the scared people to bring the sheriff. In the midst of this commotion, one man, gambler Josh Faraday, remains unfazed. The townsfolk and the sheriff then arrive with their guns drawn. But when he pulls out a wanted poster of the bartender, they lower their weapons and must now pay him. Later, Faraday finds himself in a tight spot. Accused of cheating by two brothers, they drag him to the town outskirts, intending to finish him off. Cleverly, Faraday distracts them with a card trick. The result? One brother dead and the other nursing an injured ear. On the outskirts, Emma and her associate Teddy Q approach Chisholm. Desperately, they share their town's plight with Bogue and how they urgently need help. Moved by their story and the mention of Bogue's name, Chisholm accepts the gold coins they offer and agrees to lend his skills. The trio encounters Faraday at a stable, struggling with a stubborn stable master. Seeing an opportunity, Chisholm offers to settle Faraday's horse bill if he joins their mission. Faraday nods in agreement. With a new ally on board, Chisholm sends Faraday on a task, head to Volcano Springs and find a man named Goodnight Robichaux. In Volcano Springs, Faraday and Teddy find themselves amidst a brewing showdown. One man is accusing another Billy Rocks of winning unfairly and challenges him to a real gunfight. But when the moment comes, Billy surprises everyone. Instead of drawing his gun, he hurls a hairpin, striking the challenger dead. All eyes then turn to Robichaux, who starts collecting bets from the onlookers. One man hesitates, but upon hearing Robichaux's renowned name, he pays double. His skills as a sharpshooter are legendary. As he settles for a shave, Faraday and Teddy approach the duo, discussing the possibility of them joining Chisholm's team. The pair agrees, especially when they hear it's a paying gig. Meanwhile, Chisholm and Emma stumble upon a seemingly abandoned house, only to find a lifeless body inside. They're not alone. Lurking within is Vasquez, a wanted Mexican outlaw. While Chisholm could easily claim the bounty on Vasquez's head, he offers a different proposition. Join the team and evade capture. Seeing the advantage, Vasquez agrees. Once the two groups come together, there's a moment of lightheartedness as Faraday playfully teases Vasquez. With their banter behind them, they set off on their journey. Yet their team isn't complete. They're on the lookout for a tracker, Jack Horn, to which two outlaw brothers boast about killing the legendary assassin, identifying a rifle as proof. But in a sudden twist, one brother is swiftly felled by a hatchet to the chest, while the other is stomped on. The real Jack Horn retrieves his hatchet, proving the brother's claims false. Chisholm, seizing the moment, extends an invitation for Horn to join their team. Horn, a man of few words, simply walks away, leaving his answer hanging in the air. As night descends, Chisholm and his crew camp on a hill. Under the canopy of stars, Faraday shows Teddy some magic tricks while Sam and Goodnight share old memories. It's clear they share a history, a camaraderie forged through years. With that thought, the night deepens, enveloping them in darkness. As dawn breaks the following day, Sam and his crew awaken to Horn silently indicating he's decided to join them on their mission. But to their surprise, they meet a Comanche named Red Harvest. 
Chisholm, with his limited knowledge of the Comanche language, strikes up a conversation and seeks the man's assistance. Red Harvest offers Chisholm a bite of his meal, and as he does, Red Harvest nods in agreement, signaling his decision to be part of the team's mission. The team moves forward, navigating diverse landscapes until they finally reach the gates of Rose Creek. Initially, Chisholm and Billy Rocks step into the town alone, soon coming face to face with some of Bogue's henchmen in the town center. Among them is the imposing Sheriff Harp and Bogue's trusted Lieutenant McCann. Without delay, McCann issues a stern command to Chisholm, telling him to lay down his weapon. Attempting to assert dominance, McCann warns of the 22 armed men he has, ready to strike at his call, yet Chisholm tells them to come take the gun off him. As tension peaks, one of McCann's men perched high on a building rooftop is signaled. But before he can act, a body plummets to the ground. Red Harvest had silently taken him out. Then, in a heartbeat, the air becomes thick with tension. An intense standoff ensues, where every second feels like an eternity. Then bang. Chisholm's crew with precision and unyielding speed, fire their weapons at will. A whirlwind of gunfire, knife slashes and arrows pierce the silence. One by one, their opponents fall some even before they can react. In the midst of this chaos their enemies try to flee or hide, they each get gunned down, but one horse races for dear life only to be halted by an arrow's sting, however, not all goes as planned. Good Knight, unlike the others, hesitates, and this split-second delay allows McCann to escape, galloping away on his horse. As the echoes of the battle fade away, the crew shares their kill count, with Faraday boasting the highest at seven. Amid the debris, Chisholm locates the once imposing but now fearful sheriff, ordering him to come out, Chisholm instructs him to relay a message to Bogue in Sacramento. Chisholm is in Rose Creek, and he's waiting. With Emma at their side, the seven gather the townspeople. They ignite a spark of resilience, urging them to defend their homes and loved ones. The townsfolk, unfamiliar and apprehensive about wielding weapons, express their concerns. But considering the distance between Rose Creek and Sacramento, they have approximately a week before Bogue retaliates, and hence they can either stand and fight or run. As night blankets the town the crew gathers around a meal reflecting on the day's events and discussing the need to train the villagers. By dawn there's a noticeable shift in the atmosphere. While many decide to pack up and leave, a commendable number choose to stay and defend their home. The task ahead is challenging. Training sessions begin, with Billy introducing the art of knife-wielding and both Faraday and Good Knight undertaking the gun training. The initial results are, frankly, disastrous. Stumbles and missed shots are the order of the day. Amid this, Faraday, recalling Goodnight's hesitation during the confrontation, challenges him. Handing Goodnight a gun, he prompts a demonstration. With all eyes on him, Goodnight exhibits his prowess, leaving many in awe. As training ends for the day, the Magnificent Seven regroup at the town's edge, acutely aware of the massive challenge they face. Deciding they need to bolster their defenses, they head to the mines. Stealthily, they take down Bogue's guards one by one. Making their presence known to the oppressed laborers, they offer them a choice, embrace freedom or stand with them. Their discovery of a shed loaded with explosives and ammunition is a game-changer. Returning to Rose Creek with these new resources, the morale of the townsfolk gets a much-needed boost. The newfound reinforcements provide a glimmer of hope in the face of imminent conflict. In Sacramento, the sheriff delivers Chisholm's audacious message, challenging Bogue's bravery. The message stings, insinuating Bogue would be a coward if he didn't show up in person. In a fit of rage, he kills the messenger and commands his men to ready an army for war. As the anticipation of Bogue's impending attack grows, the seven walk around the landscape. They make a strategic plan to lure Bogue's men inside the town where the villagers will remain indoors and shoot at will. They immediately engage in intense preparations. The streets of Rose Creek transform into a battlefield, with traps strategically set up and villagers positioned at key locations with Red Harvest taking off on his horse. Under the starlit sky of Rose Creek, the Magnificent Seven share a hearty meal, letting loose with drinks and moments of laughter. Their camaraderie strengthens not only their bond with one another but also with the townspeople. This newfound connection adds a personal touch to their cause, solidifying their resolve to defend the town. However, as the preparations intensify, Red Harvest returns saying the enemy is en route to their location. Meanwhile, Good Knight grapples with his tormented past. Memories of lives he's claimed weigh heavily on him. In the stillness of the night he confesses his inner turmoil to Chisholm, expressing his wish to abstain from further bloodshed. He chooses to slip away, disappearing into the vastness of the night. Emma seeing the void left by Good Knight steps forward, offering to fill in for him. Sam acknowledging the weight of their undertaking gives Faraday and the rest an option. 
either continue on this perilous mission or choose a different path. To his surprise, Faraday and the rest stand unwavering by his side, committed to the defense of the townspeople of Rose Creek. At dawn, the alarming clang of the bell shatters the morning silence, signaling the approach of the enemy. As the sun begins its ascent, the children of Rose Creek are ushered into a bunker, while the town's defenders assume their carefully planned positions. Standing ominously on the horizon is Bogue's formidable army, lined up in imposing precision. From the depths of their ranks emerges Chisholm, a lone figure, squaring off against the threat. Recognizing him, Bogue signals his right-hand man, who bellows a war cry that the army mirrors before they gallop forward in a unified charge, leaving Bogue behind to watch the battle unfold. The scene is reminiscent of a classic western showdown. Horse hooves thunder, dust rises, and the atmosphere thickens with tension as Bogue's forces charge headlong into Rose Creek. As the attackers close in, Horn detonates the explosives, sending many of Bogue's men hurtling off their steeds. The sudden chaos provides a golden opportunity for the defenders of Rose Creek. They unleash a barrage of gunfire on the disoriented enemy. As the battle rages on, both sides sustain losses, the ground stained with the cost of war. Just when the battle seems to sway, Chisholm, Red Harvest, and Emma step up. But even their impressive feats pale in comparison to Billy Rocks, who practically dances across the battlefield, leaving a trail of defeated foes in his wake. Not to be outdone, Horn showcases his might, dominating the enemy lines then. Both Faraday and Vasquez take center stage, showing off their deadly precision. The town square becomes a playground for Red Harvest and his archery skills. Faraday, taking a moment to revel in the mayhem, ignites a series of explosive charges. With the enemy in disarray, the defenders strategically pull back. Chisholm, in a near berserk state, unleashes a whirlwind of fury upon Bogue's men, each movement a lethal ballet of precision and power, however. Faraday is shot by McCann. In a fit of rage, Vasquez avenges his comrade, sending McCann into a coffin. With each member showcasing their unique talents, they decimate the invaders. Even the familiar face of Good Knight reappears. With unparalleled accuracy, he rains down bullets upon the enemy. Bogue orders the deployment of a fearsome Gatling gun. The rapid-fire weapon cuts through the defenders, killing many as they seek shelter from its relentless barrage. Once the mechanical beast finally exhausts its ammunition, they seize the opportunity to evacuate the children. Goodnight and Billy ascend the church's steeple, preparing for the next wave. However, a new threat emerges. Denali Bogue's trusted Comanche warrior locks eyes with Horn and shoots him. Despite Horn's best efforts, a series of well-placed arrows kills the legendary assassin. Under the dim lighting of the saloon, Emma finds herself cornered by Denali, her gun clicking empty. But Red Harvest makes his grand entrance. A brutal dance ensues between him and Denali, culminating in a lethal move that sends Denali crashing over the balcony. Outside, amidst the smoky remnants of battle, Faraday, clutching a bleeding wound, links up with Chisholm. Determined to turn the tide, Faraday with the help from Chisholm mounts a horse and sets out on a valiant charge towards the machine gun's position. As he rides, Goodnight and Billy, perched in the church steeple, provide a hail of bullets as cover, their shots ringing through the air. But the Gatling gun aims itself at the duo and both Goodnight and Billy meet their end. Faraday, even with bullets piercing his flesh, persists. As he nears his target, the last act of defiance sees him with a cigar, offered by one of Bogue's amused men. What they fail to notice is the dynamite in Faraday's other hand. The explosion that follows destroys all men nearby. When the dust settles, only Bogue and a couple of his henchmen remain. Chisholm swiftly neutralizes the two gunmen and faces Bogue near the ruined church. They duel, Chisholm disarming Bogue with a shot. As the coward flees to the church, Chisholm wounds his leg. The terrified Bogue pleads, and Chisholm suggests he prays. He recalls how Bogue's gang invaded his Kansas town, murdering his family. With a scar from a near lynching, Chisholm begins strangling the devil using his scarf. Bogue tries to draw a hidden gun, but is killed by Emma. Amidst vast devastation and countless casualties, the townspeople express gratitude to Chisholm, Vasquez, and Red, praising them as they depart. The movie concludes with the graves of Faraday, Goodnight, Horn, and Billy, and Emma's narration honors the memory of the Magnificent Seven. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.